No, I can't say this entire cake is vegan. No, but no, no, the, the, the cake is vegan, but cream Why cheese is vegan? not. What is vegan? No, it's not vegan because it's cream cheese. It's made with oh. dairy. It's made with milk. So it's not vegan. So it's not vegan. Hey guys, it's me, H. Lewis of H. Lewis Presents. Today I'm going to show you how I make a decadent chocolate cake using aguafaba. Here goes. And it's going to taste like one of those popular chocolate peanut butter cups. Mm, mm, mm. I can't wait already. So I have about a cup of peanut butter, creamy peanut butter, in this jar. Now what I like about this cake is I can put all the ingredients in one bowl, mix it up, and that's it. So I loosen and smooth out the peanut butter with a spatula. Then I take three tablespoons of oil, coconut oil, to further smooth it out. Now this is all the oil you're going to need. Keep smoothing it out with a rubber spatula to get it as smooth as possible. Remember, we're going to use aguafaba, so this is an eggless cake. The cake itself is actually vegan. Add one cup of sugar. Mix that in very well. Then add a cup and a half of all-purpose flour. Incorporate that. Then add one cup of unsweetened cocoa powder. I always add some coffee to my chocolate desserts. So this is about a third of a cup. Make sure you mix that in well. Then I fold in my aguafaba. Be sure to catch the recipe and how to make your own. This is about two chick pecans worth of aguafaba. Some call it vegan egg whites. I just fold that in. Try not to let the aguafaba collapse, but some of it will. Don't worry about it. My technique is to swirl in the middle and then go around, fold over. Cut down the middle, swirl around, fold over. Keep going until the aguafaba is incorporated inside the batter. Then I'll add the little bit of aguafaba I have left. This will make it really, really smooth. Down the middle, swirl around, fold over. Repeat. After a while, you'll notice how smooth your batter will become. I add about a teaspoon of vanilla, never imitation. Just about there. Add a pinch of salt and blend until perfectly smooth. Oh, it looks so chocolatey and you can smell the peanut butter coming through. Now I separate these within two smaller pans. You can use one larger pan, but I like to put a layer of filling or fruit in between the two cakes. If your cake batter is not evenly distributed between the two pans, don't worry about it. Put the smaller cake on top. Be sure to get every last drop of that good batter. Now place your cake batter inside a preheated oven at 375 for about 45 to 55 minutes. It smells so, so good. I take a butter knife and I go around the pan just to be sure the cakes come out cleanly. I let the cakes cool in the pan for a few minutes and then I carefully put them on a cooling rack. One down. One to go. Now the outside of these cakes are more rigid than usual, but inside is moist and delicious. So be careful not to crack your cakes. Place an eight ounce package of softened cream cheese in a bowl. Break that up and smooth out just a bit. I'm gonna add some coffee to the cream cheese filling to echo the flavors of the cake.
whip that in really good. Also, a teaspoon of vanilla would give it great flavor. I also add in two tablespoons of sugar. Then to make it extra special, I'm going to give it a few splashes of coffee liqueur. Be sure to incorporate that really, really well. I could eat the filling just by itself. Now I'm going to melt some chocolate chips to swirl into the filling. Now this can be done simply by putting this at the microwave at 20 second intervals until the chocolate's melted. Stir it with a spoon and see if you need to put it back into the microwave for another 20 seconds. And I see that I do. I really do feel like this is the fastest, easiest, and safest way to melt chocolate. Look at that. Just swirls of chocolate goodness. If you see a chocolate chip here and there, just keep stirring. It will melt. Now I want to give this like a marbled effect. So let's see how successful I am. Just put in the chocolate and give it a few swirls. That looks good. Another spoonful of chocolate. Swirl that in. You know what? I'm going to use the fork to help me. I'll spoon the chocolate in with the spoon and swirl it with the fork. Okay, let's get that last bit of chocolate. All of that chocolate. Last swirls. Let's see how this goes. It's looking pretty good. Now this is going to be the filling as well as the frosting on top of the cake. Now, which one is the larger one? I think it's this one. Yep. So that's going to be my bottom piece. I'll leave it on the rack. So this way I'll make a mess on my counter. Just pour your filling on there and swirl it around. This one doesn't have to be perfect because the other cake is going on top. I don't have any chopped nuts on hand at the moment, but if I did, I would add it to the filling. Just get a nice even layer on there. Okay, we're just about done with this piece. Now for your top piece. Just place it right on top. Now use your filling as a frosting. Just pour that chocolate goodness on there. I only do the top, so if a little bit falls off the edge, that's okay. In fact, I like the way that looks. I rarely frost the whole cake. Rarely. Just keep swirling with the back of a spoon, side to side, side to side, and then circles. And again, if I had some chopped nuts on hand, I would sprinkle the top. After all, it is a peanut butter and chocolate cake. To present this cake, I'm just going to use a plain white dinner plate. Carefully lift your cake and center it on the plate easy and there it is your peanut butter chocolate cake and it tastes just like a chocolate peanut butter cup only better I'm sure when you make this it's going to be well received let's take a taste ciao I ain't playing with you mmm so good Use aquafaba to make this cake. Let me know how it goes. Please check out these videos and don't forget to subscribe. Goodbye.